Right on the speaker. You see, you see. I thank you. I'll begin with uh, the niceties of the day. The chairperson and his team for uh, an immaculate job. We thank you and uh, congratulate you. Right on the speaker, the second issue for me is again for uh, our own housekeeping. I did ask the right honorable deputy speaker on the floor of the house whether he had uh, allowed the members to go and meet the president. And uh, unfortunately, the right honorable deputy speaker did not offer that clarity you have offered. And I, I cancelled then, and I still want to cancel, that if we want to protect the integrity of this house, right honorable speaker, Nobody should go and meet no one without the tacit and direct all the direct approval of the Right Honorable Speaker of the House. So that the Speaker is in charge of the business and the conduct of business in this House. Three and related Right Honorable Speaker. The President should be well advised that it is his right to interact with any committee of parliament conduct any business and therefore he should be advised that if he wishes to participate in that business he should request the speaker to be one of the witnesses wishing to give evidence to the house so that does not the president does not put us in an awkward situation but but which kind of characters do you have how do you put your law on procedure for heaven's sake. Uh -uh. Lope, can you finish? No. You cannot put a lope on a procedure. <laughs> uh, right on the speaker, the point I was making is that uh, the president has a right to interact with the committees of parliament, to give evidence, to give views, in the past, right on the speaker, Order. this, this government to law. This government used to have a prime minister in the past, and it was the job of the prime minister in the past eh? to close that there's, gap. There is a prime minister here. No, I was I was speaking in jest, right on the speaker. Okay, advising the prime ministers to pick up their duties. If there is business in the house to which the president has interest. The prime minister has an obligation to advise the president of the business in the house to register his interest. Because what you're trying to protect are the committees of parliament to work without any due interference. Especially after they are done their work. Thank you. Then second, right on the speaker. The committee is observing very well that the report, I mean the agreement, for the attendant violations of the laws of the land, including the stream of the land, is void ab initio. I am afraid in the conclusions they're talking about regularization. Once you have declared an undertaking illegal, regularization never arises. So we will we'll seek the clarification of uh, the, the chairperson, or at best the land attorney general, whether the law has since changed that you can actually regularize an illegality, so that we can see how to proceed. Three eternal speaker. The lease that was expired, as able observed by the committee, I don't think we need to really uh, do so much. Clearly, the provisions of uh, Section 170 of the RTA, the Registration of Titles Act, is very unequivocal on how to protect public interest or personal interest. Mm. We ask that uh, as one of our resolutions that a caveat be entered because, candidly, the committee is saying, and we are in agreement, that indeed there is no agreement. When there is no agreement, 
what to do is not protect whatever is public property. Part of the protection is to actually uh, put a caveat on the title. Any attendant issues, including an attempt by the company to try and litigate, those are other matters we leave to other arms of government to deal with. For us, we would have exceeded our mandate of protecting public interest. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Mwanga has partly navigated on what is becoming an inherent challenge, probably in the edges chambers. The Private Public Partnership Act came into effect in 2015 and has since heralded so many undertakings by government and private persons and companies. Do we ask that one of our resolutions is to ask the Land Attorney General to lay before Parliament all existing PPPs for the attention of Parliament, Lord Honourable Speaker? There seems to be a darker room in the AG's chambers where particular ungodly undertakings are done on behalf of the people of Uganda. And whatever is not godly, you can uh, non it. I'm, not, I'm just saying uh, ungodly. Right, Honorable Speaker, then we can have occasion as Parliament, as part of our gatekeeping, to interest ourselves in some of these uh, uh, undertakings by government on behalf of uh, the people of Uganda. Right, Honorable Speaker, again, to bring clarity to this conversation, the committee is observing that the agreement was potentially not signed. So are we talking about an existing agreement? B because again, once say we, we can regularize, does it exist? Any form? Any function? So we need to really have that cleared. Right on the speaker, so that we can conclude on it as we take leave of the subject matter. Lastly, right on the speaker, the committee observes that some of the witnesses were a bit elusive and actually some refused to appear before the committee of parliament, which is contempt of parliament. May we ask the chairperson to clearly inform parliament who these contemners are so that we can really take charge as parliament, because some of them are actually report to parliament. So if you are a witness and you are invited and you decline to appear, to give evidence in a matter before parliament, right on the speaker, we do not have to really uh, show around our weight, but we can actually exert our powers as parliament. I would like to ask uh, of the chairperson to help parliament understand who these contemners are, so that we can take action on them. Right on the speaker, finally, I would like to appreciate Dr. Wanika and the petitioners. It was a matter that began in the shadow cabinet, but I am happy the House embraced it. That should be the spirit of this House. Because eventually when we enter this building, we become the representation of the aspirations, of the desires, and the frustrations, and the dreams of the people of Uganda. And therefore, we must discard all partisan banter and reg uh, legislate for posterity. I thank you, and I would like thank to ask you. this House to adopt this report with these amendments we are debating right on the speaker.